Okay. You don't move. I'm coming here. Uh, okay. I step back. So if I don't move, yeah. You're well, right here you don't want to move. Straight up. Okay. And step. There you go. Here, so kind of coiling. And then as I start to move forward, you're going to step in. back. And really, it's yeah, together. And you go fit here. together. So what okay. I want to do. So now is where I still, I'm still waiting for you to back up. So the de-escalation, and let me do it with the sword and, and uh, I'll show you the other side. De-escalation is here. Wait until I come in. Each knee now and now. Yay! With the back side to get up here, maybe if you come off of these, I'm like, the rest of it. Okay, I'm still Come up on that. Did you see this? Instead, you're going to push through the top right to my. Oh, he's not going to let me back in here. Okay. One, two. Now you're okay. When that second foot moves. Yeah. Let me show you something on the beginning of this song. Um, he sang a one of the purposes to hide the weapon. So if I do this with my arm, it exposes it. Think about what the stick wants to do. It's standing here. It wants to do this. Straight line. Well, it's got to go around my shoulder, right? Wrong. It's going on a straight line. My shoulder can just get the hell out of it. And so if you think about turning your hip and shoulder and letting this come straight to the eye, it creates that straight line. It's the same thing when you do Kai uh, Hazushi. You're here and people have a tendency to come out to the side. It's got to go in this line. Right now, my shoulder's in the way. Well, what do I got to do? Move my shoulder. So, same thing here. I'm, gonna, I'm going to attack you with my hips. Here. Straight in. You can press this in. See how this is you just just have this kind of relaxed a little bit more and then then extend forward. No, just extend just extend right forward. Mm -hmm. right yeah. So that's yeah. but that's a little thing. But right here, my six pointing at Kirby over there. I want the stick coming at the whole time. Two different versions. Uh -huh. Yeah. I've turned as he starts to approach you. You go, oh, I'm not defenseless. Mm -hmm. Or I've heard that you let him get fairly close and then surprise him, yeah. which is. Uh, it's. Not, I don't think it's a surprise so much as I don't need to move here. Okay, he's approaching me. Is he a mile away? Three miles away? When does it matter? Now, it matters when you get to pre-mine, to this step where one step is a cut, I have to stop you by then. So when your foot starts to come down, this is my understanding anyway, is now. Okay, now, one thing that, here's what I've done, is you come forward and you matching weapons. See how I've got center one. I want you to take the sword and just push Skiash straight towards my face. No, you're pushing inside. Just come straight towards my face. Look where the stick went. It's offline. If I poke with it, it misses it. So you don't have to push sideways. You just come straight in. Very natural thing for a swordsman. You got the edge. You got your hands. You just do that and everything. You've now captured my center line. I get the hell out of here. As soon as I lose center line. Oh. Why do I push you back? 
Yes. Look at Joe. I need space. Um, in the classical, uh, you know, uh, system in Omote, you do Tachyo Toshi, you do Subawari, you do, you, of course, uh, Shizui. Um, my point, and then Hisagi. Well, three out of those we first four techniques consist of. I'm going to finish this with Hikyo Toshi. But I can't do Hikyo Toshi from here because my range is back there. And it's, I think of it as similar to if I were to grab you and punch you. I, my range for a punch is here. I need you right here so I can punch you. In the Joe, my range for my best attack is three feet behind your head. So I've got to hot meat. I've got to put you where I can get you. And that's, to me, is why we have those three in there. There's four cocks. Okay, so you got to get in here. you got to get in here. Here's three different situations of getting them to the place where you should polish them off. Exactly in the sweet spot. Um, so, talked about the ending of this. I'm gonna, let's go ahead and switch gears. We'll do, uh, um, we'll do three versions of the segment. Hey, yame, yame, ooh. I want to see. I do. Okay. Um, so I think what we'll do next is um, there is, uh, um, I was talking to uh, Dale earlier about this. Um, Sagon is number 10 of Seite. And it's a pretty short kata. It is fundamentally this, right? It's that uh, Kihon. Um, so I have three different totally morphologically different versions of doing this uh, kata. So let me borrow Dale here. We haven't worked on this before, so it might be a little bit rough. But they all start about the same. Um, first version, I'll do it in the chronological order that I learned them. So I originally learned the Fugakukai Seite uh, version, which is I'm walking, he's walking towards me, I get on my right foot, and the Joe comes up from underneath towards the eyes, and I fall onto his wrist, blocking the draw. So then he's going to step back and draw the sword, and I do this, and I come in and hit him in the elbow. Thank you for moving. Then I do this, and you step back, and I do this. Okay? From the sword side. Ah. Thank you. From the sword side, it's, uh, it's excuse me, you're going to do the Joe side, I'll do the sword side. Sword side here. Sorry. There we go. You can trap my wrist and let me draw. Ah, there you go. So here, up. That's the movement I was originally taught. So. Okay. So that's, that's kind of familiar. The, uh, the difference, I'll show you the, the kendo style. The, this is one of the techniques that, and really particular, this technique is, it's got a completely different ending between the Kendo Federation Seite, the Fugakukai version Seite, and the Koryu uh, version of, uh, of Segan. So um, the Kendo Federation version goes like this, that uh, I'm going to walk towards him. I reach the sword, he comes here. I step out like this, he pops me in the chest. Then I do this and cut towards Do. So, the chain and let you, that's the cut. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw here as you, you get struck, and then you're going to reacquire the sword and cut Do. All right, 
So. Hey. Too soon. Yeah. Here. So what I'm doing here is from this moment, he can't cut me on top. If he tries to cut on top, he gets this weird angle. I'm protected. But he's going to cut me dough, so I dodge. This is Haso Kamai. Hey! And it ends like Ranai. So I don't know if you've maybe seen that. But that's. Uh, and you're going to back up. There we go. Okay, again. Hey! 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 That's not bad. Okay. So, totally different endings. Um, I'll go ahead and show the third ending. Um, but we're going to have to slow it down a bunch. The Koryu ending is. Well, Koryu has a couple of differences. One of them is when I am advancing and striking, I don't entirely come from below. I come up to here, diagonally over his head, and come through his eyes to attack. So this is, once again, that direct, it's not this eye threat, it's that I threat. So as I come in, here, he's going to come back. Then, as I draw back here, and he tries to cut dough, I'm going to pop right through his eyes. So it's this motion. Um, I don't think we're going to practice that. Because that's, it is designed to pop a hole in his head. And if you've ever seen any of the pictures of it, if I do this, we talked about full extension, that's not where his face is. Even if he's a head shorter, like me, that's not where his face is. That's where his face is. So the reason for this, that you'll see if you ever looked at it in some of the books, is from this place, that is to take it and line it up with the eyes of someone that's your height. So for him, I'd have to adjust a little bit. But for someone that's my height, that's what I'm doing. And you might understand why the Kendo Federation, in that, in that version, the ending was changed. Because it's really dangerous. It is a strike into the face at the same time that the cut's happening. And uh, they changed it to a Gono Sen movement, right? Because from you've got the sword drawn and uh, I'm here when I do this and you cut kendo style here he gets to stand up nice cut I get to do this and you have he attacks I dodge I fill the gap and you have that timing so um, it's much much safer what's the common difference the common element of those two versions is that the swordsman recovers and cuts. Okay, and the way I was originally taught was uh, that the swordsman, once you get you get the trap, and I come back here and he does this, and then I just keep falling backwards. I I quit trying to attack. I was already defeated. Um, basically before I drew, you know, I draw the sword, he hits me, and okay, you're done. Um, which I think is a possible outcome. I think that uh, if you really nail him good, get his balance, and he's falling backwards, he can't recover, that's nice. But you don't bank on it. <laughs> At least in the classical system, uh, in Sagan, Sagan is not an omote, it's not a beginning level technique. Uh, in the Seite, the first eight techniques are omote or omote level, the beginning section. The next three, uh, 9, 10, 11, are chudan, which is the middle level. And they're a little more intense. Um, of course, Ranai is kind of in a class by itself. 
Um, but my point is that when you're doing 9, 10, 11, these are pretty high class techniques. And you really, everything that you've done in the first eight of Sete, it's assumed that you're good at that and that um, all of your movements are going to be correct. The swordsman should be a little bit more aggressive. Um, and a parable, or I guess an understanding that I was uh, uh, given about this uh, from one of my seniors was that at the beginning level, you've got a pretty standard, run of the mill, decent swordsman. He's not going to screw up. He's going to be cutting with good posture. He knows his distance, all the basics of swordsmanship. When you get to Chudan in Seite 9, 10, 11, you've got a swordsman who is really strong. He is fast. He is aggressive. He is going to attack while you're moving. He, you're going to have to counter while he's attacking. Um, so you're much more pressured in those three techniques. When you get to Ranai, that's the level of Kage, which is the third set of techniques. And at that point, you've got a really superior swordsman who he, not only is he not going to make any mistakes, he's going to take advantage of any mistake you make. And you have to be really careful with him. And you can see in Ranai where the tide changes back and forth. Part of, the, of Ranai, the Joe man is on the retreat. And he only recovers when the swordsman gets just a little greedy because he's got to attack. And at that point, the tide turns. Um, but if you think about Seite in terms of that progression of the skill of the swordsman, um, then a lot of the things may, may you know make a little more sense as to um, you know why is Ryuch you know how, how is that different from Kasumi or something like that? It's you've got things happening at the same time rather than the chess game of I do this, you do that. I do this, you do this. You know, you you have a different feeling and a different timing. And Seite is kind of homogenous, but where it comes from, there's a big difference in the feeling uh, between those different sets of kata. So um, what I'd like to look at here is, is this recovery by the swordsman. Okay, so he's come in and trapped my hand here. Now there's a little trick I'm doing. I don't know if you just saw what I did. If he traps me here, I'm in trouble. I'm not going to be able to draw that sword and attack. So as he came towards me, I see this is coming. I did this. I lifted the sword up. Now I can come out from under it. So one, two, three, four, which is why you don't do that in, in the counterattack version. So um, maybe we should do both of those. Do the uh, Fugakukai version and then we'll do um, the Kendo Federation version. The difference is from this point, Zat, here, no, oh, hold on. So, Zat, is that I'm going to, from here, recover and counter underneath. Here, Zat. Okay? So, um, let's play with that movement of the, yes sir? I have been told, I've never worn two swords. Uh-huh. But I've, I've, you, know, you tend to be Western and think of the gun. I've been told that if you were wearing two swords, you would really be more in here with the handle. Mm -hmm. So it's right there. And that makes a big difference as to where you intersect your... Yes, yes whether you're that's true. ...here or here. Yeah, now, I frankly have not done this kata with uh, two swords. But uh, usually, if, if you're here, the problem is that with the sword out to the side, as I walk down the street, yeah. I'm going to be hitting people and getting in fights all the time. So the short sword was more of this angle, and the long sword was more of this angle, so that you didn't, as you walk around, you're not, uh, you know, causing blood feeds every, every minute. But, but, but it's still where you can 
Yeah. The hand rather than being like a gun. In the Ido, if you think about, well, and obviously this is not the Ido, yeah. but um, I'm going to have the uh, tip, the, the kashi right here, on my center line. And if you look what happens with my hand, it just naturally comes right up to that grip. So this is, um, this is a really a good place to have that sword. So what's happening is I'm not reaching here because that'd be elbow. I'm reaching here, which center line would pop me right on the wrist. And that's the geometry of the cut. Okay, so let's alternate uh, Joe and sword and uh, try this. First, let's do the uh, the full version. Boom and boom. This will require the swordsman to keep backing up. And then I want you to try to recover the sword and cut. And see how that works with the second version. Let me get so close. If I'm here and now right here, if I'm here, I'm dead. You've already got me. Just hit me in the eye. Okay, if we're here, the, the, what, why do you block the sword? Because you can't take me out. Okay. If you can take me out, you're done. But you're a little too far, so you start stretching that step. It's not going to reach. Drop on the wrist. Now I come out here and go ahead and strike. But then when you draw back, oh, you have that feeling. Yeah. So, um, and let me show you the feeling of the classical. Uh, uh, I'm not going to do the ending, but of the trap at the beginning. Feel that? This right here, it jerks you back. That's the intimidation. And it's, it's an intimidation, but it's because I'm attacking your eyes. Um, I could probably stretch my step a little bit further and pop you, I, I might fall down, but you'd be dead, so I'm not, I'm not worried about it. But the different feeling from this, reaching here, it's not quite going to make it, it just barely rises up into your perception. I was taught the ski version, it's on a line to your eyes and just falls short and traps here. So as you reach for the sword, it's going to trap here. And at this point, if you just try to draw the sword without moving, it's not, it's not or you get something like that. But, so that's why when you're here, you step back and you pull this hip back and the sword actually, you think about how the sire works. I'm out here. I can't really get forward enough to draw this way. I don't want to step back this way, so what I'm doing is I step back here. Here. And then at this point, I come here. Right? And so, Kendo Reme version. Hey! A little bit too far. But that's the idea. And then from this one, you're going to step back and square up. Zanshin. Okay? Yes. Um, oh, is it? That's not mine. Nice. This is a nice Joe. Ooh. What's happening is from this point here, I do that and immediately strike into the eyes. Uh, so that's the one where you're stepping forward to attack me at the same time that this is coming in your eyes. And the solution to that is for the swordsman to start your cut and then do this. Oh, okay. So you, whoa. Yeah. Oh. This hand, this hand stays right where it is. My feet come together and this comes to chest, center of chest. Zut. Hey. So from here, 
Did you catch this? Watch, watch. Extend first. A little bit, everything we're doing, a little bit big, a little bit extension. If I'm going to strike with this here, I don't just come straight. Extend. So same thing, same thing here. And I can, here, this is not as good as full extension. If I do that, I get a home run. If I do this, I get a chip shot over the third baseman. So big full body arm. Yeah, just a quick dodge, no step. And the idea here is from this place, when I pull back and he's coming out, all I do is pull the foot together. Zit, yay. So I'm swapping my feet. It's like 12. Yeah. And I'm thinking that they did, they gave this, they said, look, we need a safer ending. Yeah. How, how, about, this out of but how about we use the run eye thing? Because That's right. I would have to be here to cut. And you're going to punch that right through my head. And I walk into it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why we don't practice that Very way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, uh, Sanji Grai, it's about 3 o'clock, so I think uh, we'll close for the day. Beautiful work. Let's, uh, let's do our painful bow. We, oh, <laughs> we'll tour you. Traditional so, painful bow now. Traditional painful seiza. We will call it that from now on. <laughs> it says that. And just to make things really, uh, if you have a sword, it goes from your left to your right side. Joe's already on the right side. Right? Check the Joe. Yeah. And here, we're going to do uh, Mokso. So yummy. Hey. Show me. Right. Go Thank you all very much for your work. Hi.